current affairs for beginners let's start our today's session before starting our today's session first let us see answers for the questions from our yesterday's video which of the following refers to monetary or quantitative easing what did we discuss yesterday monetary easing is a process where it is not a traditional method but it is an unconventional method where the central bank will purchase government bonds or securities from the market in order to inject money into the economy so from this we can say the answer here is b it is an unconventional monetary policy in which a central bank will purchase government securities from the market to increase the money supply the next question is how is consumer price index different from wholesale price index the consumer price index will measure the change in prices of both goods and services whereas wholesale price index will cover only changes in the prices of goods and it primarily focus on primary articles fuel and power next cpi measures inflation at the final stage of transaction that is at the retail level or consumer level whereas wpi will measure inflation at the first stage of transaction that is here the goods will be traded between different organizations at the producer level inflation will be measured by the wholesale price index cpi is measured by central statistics office whereas wpi is measured by the office of economic advisor yes even this statement is correct as all the three are correct the answer here is d 1 2 and 3 Now let's start our today's session. These are all the topics that we are going to cover in detail in our today's video. And the link for the notes of this video is already available in the description below. You can download it in both PDF as well as in document format. Our first article is after Supreme Court wrap, Election Commission wakes up to its powers. This article comes under GS Paper Two under the topic of polity. This is a continuation for our yesterday's article. Here, the Election Commission has passed. restraining orders against some leading political candidates who have used who had used this communically provocative and divisive speeches during their campaigns so from this article here mainly what is important for us to look into is what are the various laws that are available to deal with these hate speeches here we can look into them the first thing is indian penal code of 1860 under this indian penal code section 124a deals with the sedition any provocative speeches section 153a of ipc will penalize promoting enmity between different groups on the grounds of religion race place of birth residence language and acts that are prejudicial to maintenance of harmony and representation of people's act of 1951 in in this section 123 clause 3a and section 125 they prohibit the promotion of enmity on the grounds of religion race caste community or language in connection with election it will be considered as a corrupt electoral practice and this section prohibits those actions cable tv network regulations act of 1950 95 under this act the sections 5 and 6 they prohibit transmission or retransmission of a program through cable network if it is contravening with the prescribed program code or advertisement code and the other act that deals with this hate speeches is cinematograph act of 1952 under this act the sections 4 5b and 7 they empower the board of film certification to prohibit and regulate the screening of a film here for us we should know what are all the laws that are available in order to deal with these hate speeches the next article is indian election south asian concerns this article comes under gs paper 2 under the topic of polity and governance here the rest of the south asia wants the best democracy for india in order to share peace and growth of the south asian region so from this entire article there are two things that are important for us from the prelims point of view one is sarc and the other thing is human development index first of all what is this sarc south asian association for regional cooperation This organization was established in 1985 in Dhaka and this organization has 8 members 
अफगानिस्तान बांग्लादेश भूटान इंडिया मालदीव नेपाल पाकिस्तान एंड श्रीलंका वाई इज दिस एस्टैब्लिश वॉट आर द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन दिस इज एस्टैब्लिश इन ऑर्डर टू प्रमोट वेलफेयर ऑफ द पीपल ऑफ साउथ एशिया एंड टू इम्प्रूव देयर क्वालिटी ऑफ लाइफ एंड टू इम्प्रूव द एकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ सोशल प्रोग्रेस and cultural development in the region in order to provide all the individuals the opportunity to live in dignity and to promote collective self reliance among the countries of south asia the next thing is human development index it is published by the united nations development program this is important this could be a possible question which among the following publishes the human development index it is the united nations development program then what is this it is a composite index that measures every country's attainment in three basic dimensions what are those three dimensions one is standard of living and the other thing is health this will be measured based on life expectancy at birth and this standard of living will be measured based on the gross national income and the education levels this will be calculated by how many years of education the adult population has and the expected years of schooling for children that is it is based on gross enrollment ratio these are the three indices which are very important and this could also be a possible question based on which of the following parameters the human development index will be calculated standard of living health and education are the three parameters then what is india's rank in 2018 india ranked at 130th place out of 189 countries the next article is sealed disclosure this article comes under gs paper 2 under the topic of polity and governance here the supreme court has passed an order asking the political parties to reveal the election commission the details of the donations they received through electoral bonds we have been seeing about this electoral bond scheme since so many days so in this video now i don't want to discuss about this electoral bond scheme please look into our previous videos for detailed information of this electoral bond scheme but here let us see something different and which is new for us then let us see about this concept called as political funding and what is the legal backing for it in india why a political party needs funds see here for every party needs some advertisements in order to promote itself so for that reason it will incur some cost so it needs some funds so how can a political party be funded there are various methods how a political party can be funded the most popular methods are like you know they can be funded by an individual person or through a company or public funding or state funding an individual person can donate or a company can donate it can be a public or state funding what is this public or state funding here the government will provide funds to the political party for election related purposes and this they can do in two ways a direct funding and indirect funding in the direct funding they will give direct funds to the political parties the government will give direct funds but this is direct funding is prohibited in india whereas there is the measure of indirect funding which is allowed in a regulated manner indirect funding in the sense funding in the form of providing free access to campaign using the state owned television and radio network they can use the state owned tv and radio networks to campaign and it provides free electoral rolls they will be exempted from income tax under section 13 of income tax act of 1961 these are the indirect ways of funding by the state then what is this corporate funding corporate funding means it is a funding to the political parties by corporate bodies in india who governs this corporate funding it is governed by the companies act of 2013 according to section 182 of this companies act a company should be at least 3 year old to donate to this political party but now 
this is removed in last year's finance bill this limit of it should be 3 year old has been removed and the company can donate only a maximum of 7.5% of its total profits even this clause is removed now there is no limit for the company to donate to a political party and these contributions should be revealed in their profits and loss accounts of the companies how much they have contributed and the contribution has to be made with the approval of board of directors even this clause is removed now a company doesn't need the approval of board of directors to donate to a political party all these new changes were brought in last year's finance bill then what are the statutory provisions that allow political parties to accept funds what are those statutory provisions it is section 29b of our representation of people's act of 1951 this will allow the political parties to accept voluntary funds that were made by any person or a company except a government company this section allows the political party to receive those funds but there is another section section 29c of this representation of people's act has made it mandatory for the political parties to reveal the donations they should declare how much amount they have received if that donation is above 2000 rupees then they should reveal the details of that donation and this declaration they should do in a report in every year they should file a report and should they should submit it to the election commission that if the donation is about 2000 rupees then there is another section section 2 clause e of foreign contributions regulation act of 1976 according to this act a contribution from a foreign source is completely prohibited we cannot the political party cannot receive funds from a foreign source but the last year's finance bill has brought an amendment to this foreign contribution regulation act this section under this act and it said that the contributions that were made through foreign funds are not invalid and no further investigation should be done for the funds that were received through foreign funds in the form of foreign funds from 1976 till now we have seen about receiving the funds then what about expenditure of these funds are there any limits on the expenditure by the political parties yes according to rule 90 of the conduct of election rules of 1961 a lok sabha candidate please remember and listen this it is the lok sabha candidate i am not saying a political party the maximum limit a lok sabha candidate can spend during the election is 70 lakh rupees that is 7 million rupees whereas a candidate contesting for a state assembly here the limit for him is 2 to 2.8 million rupees where he can spend as an election expense but the candidate should file an account of all his expenditure during the elections and submit it to the election commission if he fails to do so then the election commission can disqualify the candidate here this rules are talking about what are the limits on expenditures incurred by the political parties during elections here please do remember it is not the political party but it is the candidate of a political party there is no limit for how much a political party can spend during the election the next article is implications of the indonesian vote this article comes under gs paper 2 under the topic of international relations In this article there is mention of an international organization known as ASEAN. What is this ASEAN? Association of Southeast Asian Nations. 
This was established in 1967 in Bangkok by signing ASEAN Declaration which is also known as Bangkok Declaration. What is this? This is a political and economic organization founded by Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore and Thailand and the other members are Vietnam, Brunei, Cambodia, Myanmar and Laos. So totally this organization, this association has 10 members and they follow the doctrine known as Asian Way. Here you can see the map of these member countries. They have Myanmar, Thailand, Cambodia, Singapore, Indonesia, Laos, Vietnam, Malaysia, Philippines and Brunei. All the 10 Southeast Asian nations are members of this Asian. Now what are the aims and objectives of it? It is to promote social, economic and cultural growth, encourage regional peace and stability, promote mutual collaboration and assistance, facilitate training and research facilities among these members and growth of agriculture and industries and related sectors, promote Southeast Asian studies and uphold the relationship with international as well as regional organizations. The next article is women voters now matter much than before. This article comes under GS paper 2 under the topic of polity and governance and it also comes under GS paper 1 under the topic of role of women. Here from this article there is mention of a term known as first past the post system. What is this first past the post system? Here a candidate who gets even one vote more than the other candidate who comes second will be declared as a winner. For example, let us say there are three people who are contesting in an election and there are total 100 votes. Here we know majority means one person should get 51 votes then it will be declared as a winner. But now in this first past post system let us say one person got 44 votes and the other person got 45 votes and 11 votes went to the other person. Here the only difference here is one. So, according to this first past post system, a candidate who gets even one vote more than the candidate, another candidate who is next second in position will be declared as winner. He doesn't need a majority. He doesn't need 51 votes. Whoever gets highest votes will be declared as a winner. This method is now being followed in case of Lok Sabha and state legislative assembly elections. The next article is clouds on the horizon. This entire article is about the recent spring meetings of IMF and World Bank. This article comes under GS paper 3 under the topic of economy and from the prelims point of view we should know what is this IMF, World Bank and what are these spring meetings. We have already seen about this IMF and World Bank but now let us see in detail again. First IMF International Monetary Fund. There is a conference known as Bretton Woods Conference that took place in 1944 and that conference has resulted in four organizations. One is IMF and the other one is World Bank and the other thing is GATT that is Generalized Agreement on Trade and Tariff which now became as WTO and the other thing is Fixed Exchange Rate System but this was discarded in 1970s itself. Then now let us see about this IMF. This IMF is headquartered in Washington. The official languages used here are Chinese, English, French, Russian, Spanish and Arabic. And this IMF has a total of 189 countries as its member nations. What is the primary purpose of this IMF? This is important. This is established in order to ensure stability in order to stabilize the international monetary system post world war ii this imf was launched what are its objectives as its purpose is to stabilize the international monetary system for that it needs global monetary cooperation and financial stability and there has to be an international trade and high employment and sustainable economic growth and reduced poverty. There should be no poverty around the world to attain this aim of stabilizing the international monetary system. So these are its objectives that is to foster the global monetary cooperation 
and secure financial stability, facilitate international trade and promote high employment and sustainable economic growth and reduce poverty around the world. Then how it is going to attain these objectives? It does by three ways. One is it does this surveillance activity that is it will keep track on the global economy and the economies of its member countries. It will track how the economies of its member countries were performing and what is the global economy. And it will lend to the countries who were having difficulties in their balance of payments. And it will give practical help to the members by providing capacity development. Through capacity building, it will give practical help to the members. Then how, as we said that it will lend to the country whichever is facing a difficulty. Then how it will get the funds? Here, most of the loans will be provided by the member countries. The member countries, they will pool in the money. Based on the size of that economy, of each economy, every country will be assigned with a quota. Based on this quota, each country will contribute to the IMF pool. From this, it will blend to the member country, whoever needs the amount. So here the reserves will be in the form of the countries. They will have their official currencies. In those currencies, the funds will be there and the funds will be there in the form of gold. And another concept is special drawing rights. This is a supplement to these official reserves that is the amount in the official currencies of the member countries as well as gold as well as US dollars and this is like a supplementary income to these official assets. The next thing is World Bank. This World Bank is an international organization to help the emerging market countries to reduce poverty and share prosperity by 2030. This World Bank is like a cooperative. It is made up of 189 member countries and these member countries who are also known as shareholders, they are represented by Board of Governors. This Board of Governors is the ultimate policy makers at the World Bank. And this World Bank consists of two development institutions. Actually, it consists of five institutions. Out of five, it has two development institutions. This total five are known as World Bank Group. Here, under the development institutions, it has International Bank for Reconstruction and Development. This will provide loans, credits and grants. And the other thing is International Development Association. This will provide low or zero interest loans to low income countries and these two together is known as World Bank and the other organizations are International Finance Corporation. This will provide investment advices and asset management to companies as well as governments. Here this institution's main focus is exclusively on providing investment to the private sector. Please do remember this. It is this organization institution which deals exclusively with private sector. The other thing is multilateral guarantee agency. This will provide insurance to the lenders and investors against political risk like war and international center for settlement of disputes. It will settle the investment disputes between the investors as well as countries. So. Out of, so as a whole, we can say that the World Bank will provide low interest loans, interest free credit and grants to the developing countries or low income countries. And it focuses mainly in improving education, health and infrastructure. The next article is even remote peaks are not free of microplastic. This article comes under GS paper 3 under the topic of environment. Here from the prelims point of view we should know what is this microplastic. A new study published in the journal known as Nature Geoscience. They have reported microplastics were present on a mountain region located between France and Spain. What are these microplastics? Microplastics are the particles, plastic particles, 
which are having less than 5 millimeters in diameter and they will enter the environment either as a primary industrial product like scrubbers, cosmetics or through they will spread through this urban waste water and all the products plastic products that were discarded by the consumers they will break down and they will spread through the urban waste water now what is the impact of this microplastic here what is important is just remember a microplastic are the plastic particles which are of less than 5 millimeters in diameter and if these microplastics are taken in ingestion of this is dangerous for both humans as well as other species because these substances will contain high concentration of toxic chemicals like polychlorinated biphenyls and these are a major threat to oceans as well as marine life according to a 2017 international union for conservation nature iucn report microplastics are estimated to constitute up to 30 percent of marine ecosystem now let's see at today's practice questions with regard to political funding in india consider the following statements the next question is which among the following organizations of the world bank group is focused exclusively in providing investment to the private sector the next question is which of the following countries is or are the member nations of asian try to answer these questions and post your answers in the comment box in a tomorrow's video we will see explanation for these questions and the link for the notes of this video is available in the description below you can download the notes in both pdf as well as in document format from there Thank you.